Hi, and welcome for joining me here in my talk about UX. Very happy to be part of this virtual conference and very excited to share some of my thoughts and insights with you all on a topic that's very dear to me. Before we dive into my talk, a little bit about who you're listening to. My name is Camilla. I am from the Netherlands and I live and work in Canada. I have a background in psychology, cognitive science and media design. I've been at work in UX and the digital design since about 98. And I'm a very passionate observer of human behavior in the digital world. And at present, I get to practice that while heading up the product UX team at Technosys, where I am working with a great team of designers on a next generation uh, banking experience. This is a platform that includes uh, consumer facing home banking apps, both web and mobile, but it also includes some more complex and data heavy back office and bank stuff facing applications. We're also developing a pretty nifty design system that we're using for the design of this entire platform. And currently we're expanding into the North American market, meaning that we are growing, mixing international culture, expanding our horizons. And while the learning on day-to-day -day here is totally on steroids, so it is a great place to work. Speaking of which, uh, I'm hiring. Uh, we still have some spots to fill in Latin America and Canada. So send me a message on LinkedIn if you're interested in joining me here. So this is a talk about UX, but specifically this is about the UX of you. You as a designer of a product and a creator of a digital experience. And I wanna share this idea with you that I call your own usability, which is actually a phrase I heard myself say more and more in the last few years coaching and working with designers. Because I noticed areas where designers actually often overlook to apply those same UX principles and methods that they would do in actual design leading to unproductive ideation sessions or messy design reviews, getting stuck with insufficient input, working off the wrong feedback, not being understood in what you do, or sometimes not even getting hired. See, the thing is, when we do user research or testing, we've got our personas, you know, and we dig really deep and we wanna take a good time to think about the hypothesis that we wanna test, the questions we wanna ask, we want to make sure that we're clear and we're not confusing anybody. We want the participants to understand what they need to do. You know, we really think things through because we want feedback on the right stuff. Similarly, we put a lot of effort into our discovery of the problems that we could solve. We apply design thinking and find out what adds the most value to a product or experience. And we put a lot of effort into convincing everybody what is needed to get good user experience, what the field of UX entails and that it has a lot in it. And we do this because we're user-driven people. So how could we not care about the user? We're in the business of optimizing experiences of people with our products. And yet, when we present some designs to stakeholders or we go into a design review, what often happens is that our stuff is just presented without hardly any context. No consideration for the audience or their understanding or their objectives. It's, you know, we, have, we might have some lo-fi uh, concepts with dummy text on it. And while we're walking away through our journey, we're moving our Figma frames around on the screen and going really fast because we're super excited and we know this journey really well. And we're going to wait for constructive feedback so we can move on to the next phase. But there could be people in the audience of this meeting that just have never seen a wireframe, low fidelity, anything. So they're just gonna be distracted during your entire presentation because they really don't understand what they are looking at. You know, somebody might think, why is it black and white? They wanted to talk about branding today. That's why they are there. Or somebody is sitting there just reading the dummy copy on your screens and getting annoyed with the typos and the nonsense that they're seeing. Or you have a financial domain expert in the room because it's a, it's a financial app. You've got some numbers on your screens and the math doesn't add up. Well, that's for sure going to distract that guy. So all these things may not matter to your design at this stage, but did you inform your attendees of the meeting, your current end users about that? So in this case, we've done all the work to define our personas and our end users and to inform our design, but we forgot about the other people, the audience of the meeting that you're in. What if you looked at them as your relevant personas as well? So I want to highlight these types of places where you should not forget to apply those same UX skills and methods. 
because doing so can improve your own usability, accessibility, and the overall experience that people have of you as a designer. The stuff you create, how you present from concept to the finish line. And this will in turn improve your design altogether. There are quite a few areas that you could look at. Uh, it really is about everything that you do. But today I want to focus on one specific area where the UX easily tends to get lost. And that's in any type of UX meeting, from a design review to requirements intake to a workshop, sign-off session, or just that meeting about UX that you have every Friday. For any of these meetings, the first thing I want you to check with yourself, who's there? Do you know who everybody is and why they are part of this meeting? If not, just take a moment to get introduced with everybody. If you're working with a set team, you know everybody by now, it can still happen that faces pop up. It can still happen. You're not quite sure what one of those people actually does because there's always this point in time, it's just weird to ask. If they do, just take a moment to get familiarized. Make everybody more comfortable and more likely to speak up. You know, you might have this Bob and Bob has been at all your stakeholder meetings, but you frankly just don't know what Bob does or why he's there. Could be a little odd all of a sudden to decide to get introduced to Bob in the middle of a meeting. But you can walk over after a meeting or before or on Slack and just strike up a conversation. You may be looking at your design from a really interesting perspective, but never said anything because, well, Bob's a shy guy and he's just not comfortable speaking up in a meeting. You know, meetings is a gathering of people and you want to create a setting that doesn't ignore people. People want to be seen, they want to be recognized, feel heard, be part of a team, feel comfortable to participate and contribute. So to know your users, you need to know people. You cannot ignore the people factor in UX. So now that you know who's in the room at a human level, you need to check who's in the room at a professional level. What's at stake? There can be people from any kind of discipline or corner of, of, your, of your business, you know, from domain experts to other designers, architecture, development, business, sales, and so on. What is their role? What are they responsible for? What are their objectives uh, with your work or this particular meeting? Is there somebody in the room with a particular agenda? Do you understand how they look at your design and why they look at it that way? And don't forget, do you know if everybody knows why they are there, you might be surprised. So lots of different dif disciplines and points of view. You wanna take a moment to see what you have at the table stake-wise and that you have an understanding of what's on everybody's mind. This will help you to speak to them in their language as well. The objectives of the stakeholders may be evident, but perhaps they're not. You may be operating on assumptions. So it's always good to check up on those. So when you're having an understanding of the current context, your meeting and its users, the attendees and their objectives, when you start any meeting, you wanna set a clear direction. Just briefly summarize the objectives that you now understand that you have as a team. This is often a great reminder for everybody, including yourself, if it's still clear what direction you're all heading in, if it's actually the same for everybody. And following that, you can highlight the objectives that you or your team were hoping to achieve with this particular meeting. And if you want to show that, well, you want to show that these objectives actually fit into the bigger picture that everybody is part of, so that we all know where we are and what we're doing today, how that relates to what we need to do this year. And you also wanna highlight upfront when your objectives are actually not aligned to what you know are the objectives of the room, and you want to explain up front what your good reason is for that being the case. So think about this the same way as you would about designing good navigation. You want to avoid the unpleasant surprises, getting lost, sending mixed messages, and offering broken links. It's also very useful to go around a room and simply ask, so before we start, what are your expectations for today? It might surprise you at times that people have a completely different idea about what is about to be presented for review or what they think you should be presenting for review. So 
ask questions like, are there any expectations? Is there any concerns up front? Questions you have, things that you would like to see addressed. You may learn that there are some people sitting there with a growing concern about something that was never voiced before. It's good to know that so you can address it in the meeting and as you're going through your designs. And of course, you want to circle back to a last review or a last meeting you had with the same group of people about the same topic. Where did you leave off? What were the takeaways? What did you do with that? Did everybody else walk away from that meeting with the same takeaways? Doing these things, it creates more engagement. It helps you address relevant concerns up front. And it also wakes everybody up to the fact that you're having a meeting and you want them to participate. In your designs, you always want to find a perfect balance between user objectives and business objectives. Running a meeting is the same thing. So now that you know what everybody brings to the table and who is there, you also want to be really clear about what you're bringing to the table today. What are you going to present and does everybody understand what that is or does it need some introduction? When in doubt, introduce. Keep in mind that the further people are removed from the design process from your day to day, the less they know about it. So check for a second, does everybody understand what a low fidelity wire is? It seems really trivial, but it really helps to make everybody feel comfortable in a review or any meeting. You know, check with the, or explain why are you presenting a journey map and not a clickable prototype? Some people might be really surprised by it and you might wanna give them a head up, heads up about it. If you're working on multiple products or similar tracks, make sure that we're all in the same place. Tell up front what you're, what you're actually gonna be talking about today. Um, it's, it's easily forgotten. So this is really is about you know, answering the stupid questions that nobody likes to ask, but everybody feels so much better if they're answered. And don't forget that users, we know what users do when they feel not in control of their environment. If they're unsure about where they are, what they're supposed to do, funny stuff happens. People get frustrated, they lose their patience, or they keep hammering on about something that they do understand, or they give up, or they just mentally check out. Set a clear contact context and um, make it clear that what are we looking at and do we all understand the same? As a designer, you love solving problems and you probably also love presenting a solution. But often when we do that, we forget about the problem. I'm sure you all have experienced what happens once the design's on the screen. Everybody instantly has an opinion about it. But does everybody know what you're trying to achieve? What the problem is that you or your team was working on to solve? Did you tell them? You know, if you ask people around you what they think is important about design reviews, the answer always is, if we understand the context, the problem, the business case, what it is that you're trying to do, we feel we can contribute to that. And if you do not, it's really difficult to figure out what to say or what we're expected to do. And don't forget that people also love to contribute. So you need to enable this and make sure that the problem gets the focus. And when it's time to walk through your designs or the assignment for, for that day or that meeting, you want to be really clear on the story you want to tell. You need to think about this up front. Because often it's like, well, we did this and then we did that. We talked to this person. We changed our minds. We had a meeting. And then we did some more research, advanced marks and stuff, blah, 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 and so on. And so you've already lost half the room. People are going to just mentally check out and look at what's on the screen and stop listening to you. The things that you did in the past and all the steps you're taking, uh, they, they're unlikely to contribute to the meeting at this point. It's simply stuff from the past. So you want to talk about thoughts, learnings, assumptions, what you know or what you thought you know with respect to your design objective, with respect or in the context of the problem that you're trying to solve. Then the design discussion or the ideation session, whatever it is that you're doing is going to be focused on that problem or objective, not so much of what's on the screen or all the steps that you took. You know, there are always dozens of ways that design can solve a problem and they're probably all fine or good, but they're useless if it's the wrong problem or if they're solving the wrong problem. 
And keep in mind that if you are talk a lot about all the things that you did to get to a certain point, it gives it always gives a set of pe- a few people the idea that you were not quite sure what you were doing. And they're going to feel like they need to do, tell you how to do your job, which is really not what you're after in that meeting. So you want to keep it relevant and you want to stick to the information that is usual, useful uh, for your audience in this meeting. What also often happens is that we've presented our stuff and then it's silence. Or we say, you know, what do you think? Uh, which is a very open-ended question to ask people. So getting good feedback really is a practice in itself. And there's great resource, resources online available about design critiquing and how to do that well. I really encourage you to look into that beyond the scope of my talk today. But the gist really is to be really clear in your questions. Be clear about what you want feedback on. And sometimes you need to be very, very, very clear, meaning point an arrow at it. And you might have to repeat that a few times because people tend to, you know, diverge and start talking about other stuff. You need to keep bringing them back to what you want to talk about. What's your objective? You also need to think about leaving space for people to think and answer the question. Here, too, it's just a human factor at play that you need to take into consideration. Now, with a lot of online meetings, you can utilize, you know, FigJam and Mural and tools like this. And you can give the design to people and take five minutes in silence for them to think about it and post some notes and questions. This is a really good side effect of all this online business these days. So, you know, if you give people a lot to think about, let them give some time to think about it. Otherwise, you're going to shoot from the hip. So present your problem and put it on the screen next to your design. You want to take out all the distractions when it's time for feedback. And make sure that the focus is on the primary point of this meeting, which is, you know, just like designing a screen. Now, you might not get the feedback that you wanted, but you need to listen very carefully anyway. If you do a user test and a user tells you, well, this just sucks, I don't like it, you're not going to go and defend yourself and explain why it is that way. You don't do this with your workshop participants or your meeting audience or your stakeholders either. You know, somebody might say, well, I really like it or I really don't like it. You want to be curious as to what exactly don't you like? Why don't you like it? You want to keep digging. You might get a direction if somebody says, put it in a modal or can we expand this section? Again, why would we want to do that with respect of the user objective of that particular feature? You might get a question from somebody. What happens when I click here? What happens after that screen? Don't fall into the trap of just answering that question and moving on. You're actually getting end user feedback at that point in time because apparently it's not obvious. If somebody needs to ask you how something works, you you need to take that as a signal that you've missed something in your design. So you got to keep listening to what people tell you. It's really, you know, ideally you get beautiful critique and related to your objectives, but that's tricky for even the most seasoned designers. So be realistic. And keep in mind that you are in the people business as a UX designer. And people are very valuable sources of information that you need to learn and navigate easily. And you need to keep a constant open mind. So it's all very simple if you think about it. There's nothing new here, but it's easily overlooked. And for me, it is about a continuous practice of empathy, the most crucial skill of a UX designer. Can you put yourself in the shoes and minds of others at all times in everything that you do? And do you constantly think about what creates a better experience? So as a UX designer, are you really user-friendly in everything that you do? And that is the question I want to leave you with today. So thank you for listening. I hope this made you look at what you do as a designer from a little bit of a fresh 